Hi friends, this is the painting I'm going to make. Here is the canvas, 73 by 63 centimeter, the grid sketched to get the canvas right. And now these are the colors I'm going to use. Burnt timber, yellow, titanium, white, and deep yellow. This is for the background. Now I'm mixing these colors. As you will see, I'll use yellow ochre more on this in the background mixed with burnt amber at some places now i'm trying to cover the canvas background with these colors of course you can use a reference picture in front of you so you know where you can get lighter shades and where you should have darker ones sketching yeah coloring all the background i leave the horses and do the rest of it in the sky idea is to get the sky first so you start from the top and your hand doesn't touch the paints light brushes in the center because that is where i'm going to get my sun and you saw the linseed oil linseed oil is basically mixed in the paint to make it smooth and a little bit diluted so your brush runs smooth on the canvas using some dark colors at places and this dark is burnt amber now being careful with the sketch that I have for the horse so wherever I have to move closer to the horse I have to use my brush in a different mode I have to make it a little flat near the edges You can see that I'm painting dark on the corners and lighter towards the sun. So this is deep yellow. Now you can see how I'm moving my brush. I'm making it flat towards the canvas wherever I am moving near to the horse. So I have more control on my brush and it doesn't go inside the horse figure. Yeah. Keep moving down. Same thing has to be followed in all the places. you can see when I move towards the narrow area my brush goes more flat towards the canvas you have to bend it more <coughs> make it at a degree of 20, 10 or 20 degree yeah. this is deep yellow mainly used for painting around the Sun yeah you can always mix a little bit of white if you want to get lighter touches area where the sun will come it's just behind the head of this horse keep brushing with the yellow color and your horse figure will become more prominent now you can see heads of all the horses now now this is the background preparation for the sun <coughs> the sky above the sun has to be lighter and I have to show some clouds as well so using some white here, titanium white. So you need to move, basically focus on how you're going to use your brush here. The sun, using the same color for the sun initially, but it's not the final color. see that I'm getting some dark edges around this cloud so 
some more white brightening around the sun. At some places you can have highlighted white which means that should be very clear white. So you can show that there is sunlight falling in certain part of clouds making it more brighter. Yeah, use a broad brush to brush around the canvas to make the sky look a bit blur on the uh, sides where you don't have the sun. Keep brushing so your uh, you know brush strokes in the sky go off and you just keep the brush strokes near the sun where you have the clouds. Keep them as it is and just brush the surroundings. So you get the back surface. Keep brushing with the powder brush elsewhere. Now you can see the sky is looking much smoother and where you need the clouds it's a bit hazy. Now use white to get more shiny. the sun look more brighter with the white touches some more touches on the clouds here I'm using more deep yellow and just spreading it all over the sky so this brush is used all over now coming to the background uh, this is my horse and below that <coughs> I have to use similar colors that I have on the sky let's go ahead with a little bit of variation from what colors you see in the sky I'm using sap green here at certain places on the ground I'm going to use sap green the rest of the colors are going to be almost the same what you had on the sky linseed oil mixed to make it more smoother keep brushing take care of the horse figures so the brush doesn't touch inside the figure where you have horse so this is a start with the lighter colors and then gradually you can use dark colors here and there's no rule here on the ground you know you can always go with green on certain portions to show some grass there but it's not going to be very prominent <coughs> and then use some places where the ground is darker see I'm using my brush when I go towards the leg I make it more vertical That's burnt timber again, used for certain portions on the ground where you want darker colors, usually under the horse, so you can show some horse shadows as well. Again, no rule on the ground, you can continue using the colors you want. You can even use a little bit of black where you want, but don't make it very prominent just keep it blur keep brushing with a broader brush to make it blur and hazy at certain places now you'll see I'll move towards the horses after giving some final finishing on the ground and the sky as well so here I am using a bit of uh, deep yellow to give some brightness on the clouds so 
white edges on the sun. Now this area is more lighter as you can see in the ground here you are going to have more darker colors and now you can start with some basic finishings on the horse use the colors that you want um, I'm using an eraser here to wash off all the um, grid linings that I had on my canvas so that they don't appear Now what I'm doing is I'm painting the darker areas of the horse first. Apply patches of dark color which is here burnt umber on all the dark shades on the horse. Whichever areas in your reference picture shows darker colors, you use dark colors there. And uh, keep in mind this is oil painting, so if, even if you go wrong, you can always correct it after some time, even the next day. Now you can see that the sky is done and the horses are giving you some idea of where the dark shit should come, where should the light be coming and start getting to the lighter shades now. Do the head with lighter shade as much as possible. Um, use white, titanium white and yellow and finish off and start merging with the darker colors where you had on the horses so um, it appears as the darker color is fading in your whites or your lighter shades. Now there will be some areas where you will have mid-tones like not too dark or too light so you start using a mix of burnt amber bit of black and white so that makes it dull amber and uh, it also gives you a shade of gray so at certain places we are going to use gray certain places light brown which is burnt umber here the most important here is showing the muscles of the horse so you need to be very careful where the horse muscles are in the reference picture and you have exactly at the same place in your canvas more light light shades which is titanium white here <coughs> on the horse legs now one thing you need to be careful is the top portion should be as bright as possible and as you go down it becomes blur because uh, you are showing that there is um, dust on the ground when they're running <coughs> the dust blowing from the ground will uh, fade away their legs or the tip of the legs head of the horse uh, the center of the head is 
little bend in so the darker shade will come there as you can see i'm using dark gray <coughs> to show the area which is bent in the center of the head Every single horse has to have the same attention on details. Um, none of the horse should be left as neglected or uh, not being focused on much. As you can see, I'm focusing now on the head, which is again going to be a mix of a burnt amber, gray, and uh, a bit of ochre. Now you can see I'm sketching with my brush and that's just to give some effect on the eyes eyes need to be bright so around the head you need to give certain shades to give it a uh, effect of things popping out of canvas like or it's not exactly 3d but we have to show that it has some some portion of the uh, figure is far away and the head is the portion which is nearest to you Some more finishing on the head. more finishing on the head and the head also is a bit muscular so a lot of uh, attention to the details is required here but the pattern remains the same the center has a curve in this and then on the sides you have certain pattern on the horse muscles so you need to follow this yeah you need to follow the same pattern and continue the painting um, you can see that uh, there are different colors here uh, gray you'll see brown you'll see white and at some places it is occurring also in the horse so normally uh, you know people think we should be using just one or two colors in the horse as it is apparent but 
if you look at it in detail you will see a lot of colors a horse can have multiple you know gray you can have brown but the way it is merged together it appears that it's just in dual tone now keep blurring the sides so that you get a perfect shade on the horse at all places when you do the central part of the horse which is the uh, bust and the stomach or the back of the horse um, you need to be careful that there is a particular pattern on the muscles so that has to be followed throughout and in the reference picture it will be very clear to you how you need to and you can even sketch that first uh, so that you know you are able to see your sketch throughout but then that sketch has to be covered finally with the paint so you know the sketch the pencil doesn't appear keep brushing the head and the sides use as light colors as possible because once you have used dark it's difficult to make it lighter Though oil gives you time to do that, but it's better not to. Uh, otherwise, you'll be just making the paint thicker and thicker on your canvas, which will take a lot of time to dry. One thing more to keep in mind is that uh, when you're sketching or sketching it, it takes time to get the final finishing. Now you can see that uh, this is um, final, you know, after I have done all the colors, used all the colors on the horse, brown, ochre, the gray and white, and this is how it appears. Now this is stage three where you start giving final touches to your horse, starting with the head. You'll see how I'm using the titanium white to give some finishing to the corners of the face and again you know if it is appearing too bright you can use a brush which is dried which doesn't have any color and just brush the sides so it will merge with the background and it won't appear too much uh, cloudy or maybe too bright now the edges The edge of the horse is usually kept a little bright so it appears that the background is far away and the horse is closer to you. Some more finishing. You can always keep a dry brush next to you wherever you think the paint has been too much on the canvas or on a certain portion of the horse you can use the dry brush to wipe it off or just pull it down to merge with the other portions now here is how it looks like just I focused it for you just closer to the horse so you can see the details now, all of these will have different pattern as you can see the color is not exactly same on every single horse because the horse is uh, you know the, these horses are all at a different distance some are closer to you the closer ones will have more brighter colors but not as bright or too bright as you know it appears as a copy paste or cut paste kind of Keep finishing.
some more finishing on the head of the horse making it little brighter than the sun so it appears closer to you but then it has to be a little distant from the horse which is closest to you the leftmost as you can see is the closest one so it is more bright where I've used more white colors and this one that I'm painting right now will be this quite distant no it's almost far away from the first three ones that you see it's the rearest one and there is another one which is next to it so you see three horses are at the rearest and then there are four which are closer to you in the front see how it appears now you'll see that the face has got quite dark colors and now my next step is to keep brushing on the sides and make the prominent colors on the face a little dull by slowly merging them with the other parts of the face more touches with white and that's all on the edge uh, you know the top portion of the horse which shows that um, there is a lot of sunlight falling on the top on the back body back portion of the horse now keep brushing make it little dull use a thin brush around the darker areas and slowly merge it with the other portion of the face so you don't get um, you know very sketchy face now you'll see the face becoming little lighter in color and it doesn't have those prominent dark colors now here is how it appears after you're done with this This is entering stage four, where you start giving your final touches on your eyes, your ear. This is the reference picture that I was showing. It was quite small, but uh, you know, when you pay attention to the details, you can make it as large as possible. Someone may prefer to paint it on the wall as well. Now, more finishing on the one that was left out. This rearest one is actually uh, not having too many details, so I have to pay attention to it now. Ear and eyes made little bright. Yeah. Portion of the nose, getting final touches. Okay, so showing you from a little more closer, you can see how I am making the nose uh, with little red color in it and mixed with burnt amber. Some more finishing. Okay, so now you see that it's, we are almost there, just giving some more color on the bottom of the horse. Yeah, 
So as you can see, the head has to be a little more brighter on the rear ones, giving touches with the titanium white. This is titanium white and a medium sized brush I'm using. I don't need very thin brush here, but it's a hog brush, which is, uh, you can use any hog brush, which is very old or has a lot of bristles spread. So it gives you chance to use the same, use it very carefully and to draw the hair on the head and the neck as well. Now you need to be careful with your hand, your, because the paint is wet, your hand shouldn't be touching the paint else you'll have to correct it again. The rearest one is getting its ears now and it can hear you. This is a very thin brush, uh, almost zero number that you normally get in the market. And I'm using it to give um, more details around the nose, and here around the ear, as well as at some places at the bottom of the horse. And these are going to be the final touches. nose getting its more finish around the edges So um, now you can see that the painting is almost there, just left with its final touches and uh, wherever you see, you know, you need more finishing and you need more touches there. You can do it on the same day or you can leave it for a few days and then start on it again. Um, I, I always suggest my students to wait for a day and to come back on the painting, see it from distance, then you will know where you need to make some more corrections. So if you try to finish the painting in one go, it's usually challenging of this size of painting because you have too many details, too many figures in it, too many colors. So take a break, go around or just leave it for the next day and do finishing on the next day because you'll be more fresh and you would exactly be able to point out where you need more corrections to be done when you watch it from distance and when you leave it for some time. So here your painting is done and as I said you can always come back to the painting and make more finishing just brushing on the ground, dusks on the ground and little bit more touches on the next day. And you are there. Here you go. Thanks for watching my painting. Here is your final painting done. Do paint and let me know if you have any questions.